living in St. John, Indiana. Hey, whether you've lived in St. John, Indiana your entire life, or this is the first video you're ever really learning about St. John, this video is for you. All right, we've got content here. We're gonna talk about the history of St. John, the location, exactly where it is in relation to the region, to the US, similar surrounding towns, subdivisions of St. John, How's commuting, demographics, schools, crime, water? Why is water on there? You gotta check that out. Things to do in the area, taxes, and home prices. So uh, going straight to the history, we got St. John Township is one of the 11 townships of Lake County. So 11 townships make up Lake County. The town was named after honor of John Hack, who was one of the early settlers to the area. All right, some stats on St. John. The population is just about 20,000. Uh, average age about 42, uh, median income is about 115,000. And again, depending on what list you look at, it's a little bit different, but uh, St. John is in like the top five highest incomes for communities for the state of Indiana. So for Northwest Indiana, it has the highest income. And then uh, the going also Winfield and Munster are like in the top 10 ish. And again, the lists uh, will have those towns in different positions, but it's one of the most affluent towns in Indiana. And I just want to introduce myself. My name is Tony Anzer. I'm a real estate agent that serves Northwest Indiana and Chicagoland. So we got you covered on both sides of the border. Uh, my cell is here, 708-608-3000. And we do these videos just to help our clients and people just wanting to learn more about the area. Just give them content so they can learn about the region. And we love to help people buy and sell homes. It's what we do. And a big reason why we do these videos. So if you're looking to move in 9 or 90 days, please reach out. We love hearing from you. We hear from people weekly and we love connecting you which uh, sometimes people just ask for information about a reference for something or hey where do i go for this or you know things like that so feel free to reach out and if you're looking to buy or sell we'd love to work with you too and also just a note in the bottom of this video you're going to see in the description you're going to see different chapters so at different timestamps of the video and it's going to show you yeah, you can fast forward to different items or if you want to watch something in particular again you can go just to that chapter and not try to play guess and check here and uh, this video that we're talking about today is uh, just on st john indiana but uh, i do have you check out my videos in in the uh in my playlists you'll see i have this video that's all about northwest indiana and that gives you more holistic information about the region and then we have a myriad of other town videos too so uh, feel free to check out our playlist and again just ping me if you want like hey I was looking for more information on this town or this subdivision or you know feel free to reach out and I can shoot you a video or make content for you too all right uh, yeah so these are just some of our thumbnails of other towns you know Dyer, Crown Point, Beecher, vlog tours so again we got tons of resources so please uh, check out our playlists or I can point you in the right direction so going back to specifically St. John so we're using niche.com for a lot of our data so St. John is ranked number three best places to live in Lake County. I live in Dyer and I'm some one town over and St. John was a community that when we moved to the region, it was for us, it was, you know, we would have been equally happy St. John, Dyer. Uh, so you see niche gives the town an A uh, for these different metrics. Schools are great. Housing's great. You know, it's a nice area. It's a safe area. All right. So we'll just continue straight on. Just a quick snippet about time zones if you're not from the area. Uh, St. John in Northwest Indiana, all this red is central time zone. The rest of Indiana is all this yellow, so that's eastern time zone. And Northwest Indiana is basically an extension of Chicagoland is how the area develops. So that's one of the big reasons they, we stay on central time here. All right, so St. John, we're going to get a lot of content going on here. And let me just peel through this. And then we're gonna hop in my Google map too. So you'll see the area here. So St. John, yeah, so St. John is right here. You know, Cedar Lake, Crown Point here, Maryville, Holbert. Uh, we got Highland, Munster here, Dyer, Sherville, Sherville's this big chunk, Hammond here. And so some of the main roadways, I just wanna point that out, is 294 to 8094. That's the main northwest. If you're going to, you know, to the east coast or west coast, you're gonna find your way up here. And then um, also I-65 north is right here, or north or south. So this takes you straight to I-65, and then also takes you north to you know 8094 area. To get to Chicago land, you're gonna take. Uh, there's a couple different ways, but basically you take 8094 to 94 and then go up to the city that way and we'll get more into that in a second and other and then i just want to point out here that we are right on the border so saint john you know being here 
then the Illinois Indiana border is this line right here so we are right on the Illinois border and one thing people are wanting to learn about our new region I always want to know like okay so where if I live in St. John like where's the general area I would be traveling and so St. John itself has a lot you know the town park and rec department's great it's got you know the schools are great school the St. John's schools are actually uh and combined with Cedar Lake schools so they share the same high schools which are like over here and we'll get into that in a bit here uh but I mean St. John has pretty much everything you need like they got the super target they've got uh grocery stores they got dining uh well, we find ourselves and again I live in Dyer and so like when we're stocking up on groceries we find ourselves over in Maryville right by route 30 and where'd 65 go here we go right 65 and like right here is the costco and you know meyer grocery store and aldi and all that stuff there are those other options in the area too but we find ourselves you know stocking up in this area and then where you'd generally where i what i find most people in the region would kind of be spending their time in this like area of northwest indiana uh, Crown Point has a lot of draws for restaurants or just hanging out. Uh, you know, St. John itself has a lot to offer. And then in this Route 30 to 41 corridor, there's a lot going on there too for restaurants, shopping, what have you. So that's generally where you'd be. And I'm going to zoom out here so we can see where we are from Chicago. All right, here's my Google map with just my St. John layer. So you see St. John here. And then here's downtown Chicago. So Sears Tower, Wills Tower. I'll always call it Sears Tower. It's here. Midway Airport's here. O'Hare Airport is here. And so from St. John to downtown Chicago without traffic, you know, say it's Saturday morning or something, you're looking at about 50 minutes. It's, it's really not that far. Uh, if you're going to the airport with traffic, I mean, it could be a couple hours, but generally speaking, to get to O'Hare Airport without traffic, you're looking at about an hour. So, you know, anywhere in between there. And again, those, you know, those roads uh, are a few different options, but like 294 or 94. And then, you know, Valparaiso is another town that's, I got its own little city feel to it. And then if you were going to Indianapolis, that's another milestone going down 65. You're looking at about two and a half hours to get to Indianapolis. So now we're transitioning to water supply of St. John, Indiana. And in well, this, in Northwest Indiana, there's two options for water. Either Lake Michigan or we have well water. So we'll see here that, you know, we're talking about St. John. So St. John does have well water. So. What that means is that the the Kim, town of St. John itself has their own well system that they then pump water from the ground to their own water treatment plants and then pump it in the water mains and then your house is connected to those water mains. So, and again, so that's generally how this works. There's groundwater, uh, there's a pump in the ground that pumps it up and, you know, it's this pretend this is a pumping station so then they got tanks and a treatment plant that then and so there's one thing to be a heads up about a st john with the well water you do run into the minerals in the water can leave marks on your you know siding or hardscape you can see some scaling on fixtures so what you do is you have here like you the main thing that's most everybody has out here is a water softener so you here's a slide on the chemistry of that if you want to check that out or give me a call i can talk you through that uh so you put salt in here from you from a home depot menards anything like that uh on our softener we go through with our family we go through about three bags a month of it it's like 40 pound bags and then also this is a whole house cart uh, filter cartridge so usually you'd have one of those before that catches any big stuff and then it goes to a water softener throughout your house there's also ro systems reverse osmosis that some people will just have you'll see here this little faucet to fill up cups and water and stuff that has its own extra purification there and it's basically it's a filter all the stuff is just filtering stuff it's not like it's not treating it anymore it's just mostly filtering and then also these Berkeys, I know a lot of people have these. Uh, you get some friends that live in Beecher, Illinois, and they have like some of the worst water in the region. And uh, these Berkeys are passive. So you have, there's like some filters in here and you just tip, pop the top off, dump some water in there. And then it, it slowly drips through these filters and then the water's fantastic. So that's another solution too. Yeah, so if you want to look at this slide back, this slide tells you what other towns has Lake Michigan or well water and the lake michigan does not have any of the like mineral issues where you have to worry about a water softener so if you have lake michigan you don't need water softener 
Uh, if you have well water, you, you do. That's generally the, the main difference. Hey, I just want to put a quick segue in here on our video here. If you could, if you could subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. We get tons of views and we appreciate it. Uh, but our subscribers, we could use some more help on that. So if you would hit that subscribe button, it will notify you when we post new videos. And it also just helps us out as people subscribe. YouTube knows that people are watch watching this content and then it promotes it more. So it really, your simple subscription helps out. And then also if you're feeling even super generous, if you like the video and leave a comment that'd be even all would make our day all right so we're going to transition now into schools so the public schools are hanover central high school hanover central middle school and these are both in actually cedar lake it's not not far but it's in the town of cedar lake and then lincoln elementary school so and i'll cue those up so what we're going to do is we'll go through each school and i'll show you where they are on a, a google map so lincoln elementary school it's ranked it's given an a it's a number 16 in all of lake county which is great you know here's some of the metrics and i like reading this it's got 497 students through k through four student to teacher ratio 17 to 1 and there's one thing to note again they are in the hanover school district and i know some people that if they're looking on the border from lake central which is like dyer school districts or st john sometimes people just choose to move to st john because prices are pretty much the same but um they like the hanover schools uh, districts a little better it has lots of space available and they've been expanding uh, recently so we'll get to that but they've got some huge facilities that are really nice and all that good stuff so middle school hanover central middle school and it says number six best public middle school in lake county it's given an a minus uh, for these metrics and we got 836 students in k or five <laughs> fifth through eighth there we go tony uh, with students to reach teacher ratio 17 to 1 and that's pretty killer all right hanover central high school is given a b uh here's the metrics there you got 763 students in grades 9 to 12 student to teacher ratio 15 to 1 which is really awesome all right so back to my trusty google maps here so st john you know here's the town we're looking at uh, so the the elementary school is lincoln elementary school and it's right off of 231 and yeah, sold some houses all in this region. Yeah, so it's right off of 231 right here. Uh, it's a pretty easy ride to get to from anywhere in St. John. Uh, there's really you not know, really too much about traffic because it's all minor roads to get to here. And then the junior high and high school is, it's these two. Uh, ignore that one. <laughs> That's for uh, uh, Cedar Lake because they're in the same school district as grouping together. So to get to these is right off of 41. So you'd take Highway 41 or there's some back road options too, depending on which way your flavor is. So you'd write down 41 uh, to Hanover Central High School is right here, 133rd. Middle School is right off of 41 to the south. And this is a lot of acreage here and they're building more and more facilities right, right, even right now. Yeah, before moving on from schools, I want to touch on one last thing that actually my family benefits from. So. The state of Indiana has the school voucher program and here's the website for it. And then these are like the main links and feel free to reach out uh, since we're in this program, get tons of experience using it. So the state of Indiana has this voucher program where they'll pay a good chunk of private school tuition. So it depends on what the amount they pay is based off of what school district your kids would otherwise go to. And so for us, our kids would go to Lake Central. So we were paying, I don't know, eight grand a kiddish or something like that a year for that. Um, and the voucher program existed for a long time, but the state just uh, significantly increased their income limits. And so we then qualified for it. And so with that, the state pay in Lake County, I think it's like, it's, I think it's more than this, but they pay like 6,500 a kid. And so the balance is left to us to pay. Uh, so we went from paying like eight grand a year to like 1500 a year and the state pays the rest. So that's pretty awesome if you're interested in a private school. So St. John, this has, so how you read this graph here is that, or this uh, table, is that 50 is the median for the United States. So you take the all the grime per divided by communities, number of communities, and 50 would be like the median amount of crime. And so in St. John, you see it's like very close to zero. St. John, Munster, Crown Point, like I don't, Cedar Lake, no one's ever, I've never heard anybody be concerned about not moving to one of those towns due to crime rates. Uh, this is just some more information. If you come back to this, if you want to see it, this is just prorated data on 100,000 residents. So St. John only has like 
20,000 or something. So these are, divide each of these by, I guess, five-ish or something, and that's how many of these incidents there are a year or something. Something like yeah. that. Okay, yeah, so this slide is just a summary of crime rates. And again, this is just, this is relation to the median for the United States, and it shows you the towns of Northwest Indiana, and St. John here is at 17%. I think that's, I guess Dyer's at 12, but I mean, you can see that it, it's super low. So. All right, getting into how long to get to places. We touched on this a little bit earlier, but from St. John to O'Hare Airport is 59 minutes. Then, this slide is, is just talking about train commuting. Like say you're going to the city, there really isn't an option to commute from St. John area to Chicago. So what you would end up doing is driving over to University Park, Illinois, and then taking the train to go up to the city. So from St. John to University Park, you need to get there early and all that stuff. So you don't miss your train, account for traffic, all that. You're talking a half hour to get to there, and then you got another 45 to an hour, depending on if it's an express train or not. So you're looking at an hour and a half easy each way if you are going to take the train commuting. Uh, you could also go to Valparaiso, but that's going to take you a lot longer to take the train there is a south shore train going through like munster dyer this slide is kind of just for fun on the note of train commuting so this is the metro lines this shows where they all have lines that go and so like this is that university park one i was talking about that you go to uh, but these show the commuter routes for other trains that they have all right property taxes so we're gonna camp out on this one because there's a couple things that are confusing so i'm just gonna make sure you guys are crystal clear as to how property taxes work okay so in northwest indiana or there is a 1% property tax cap for owner occupied residences. So what that means is that, and this is based off your assessed value. So if your assessed value is $400,000, what's 1% of 400,000? You got 4,000. So that means that your tax cap would be 4,000. So that means your taxes can't be more than $4,000. But the caveat to that is voter approved projects can be additional. So like if a school referendum happens, but if those are on there, you're talking ballpark 500 bucks on the high side, generally speaking. Uh, so if you have a $400,000 house, you're generally looking at no more than 4,500 for taxes. And it's usually lower than that because the the county, they're, they're not crazy about their assessments. So usually your assessed value is that you get is less than what your, what your home would actually sell for. So it's, it's not, that's pretty nice. But one thing that's note here is that if you aren't owner occupied, that your tax cap is 2%. So if you buy an investment property, then just know that your tax cap is gonna be closer to, your tax amount really is gonna be closer to 2% of your property value. Also of note though, is that when you buy a house, you have to go to the the recorders or the, the courthouse. Here's my courthouse, it looks like a house. You have to go there and then file your exemptions. You know, here's your exemption paperwork and then once you do that, then it's on the tax record that your house is owner occupied. If you don't, and then you get the 1%. But if you don't do that, you forget, then you're paying 2%. And as far as I know, there is no payback. So if you're like, oh no, it's you know January 1st, and you realize you didn't file your exemption when you bought your house previously that year, then you're stuck paying for one year the 2% amount, but then you can get your uh, assessments reduced to the 1%. And so here is, so how much would you actually be paying? And again, it's, it's based off of your assessed value, but, and again, the assessed values are usually quite a bit less or 20%-ish, say less than your actual sale value. And so these are, I pulled up, so three bed, one and a half to two bath houses that are in the 1800 to 2200 square foot range. Pulled up a number, a, a representative house of, of that type, because that's generally what most people are buying or for starter houses at least. That's the type of house most people targeting as a starter house. And it could be a finisher house too, but that's generally a pretty representative house. And so a house like that in each of these different areas is this amount. So. For St. John, we're looking at the median tax was 33.53, which is pretty fair. Like if you take these houses, put them in Illinois, they'd sell for less, but your taxes would be at least twice as much, like easily twice as much. This, this so. is actually what a property tax statement looks like. And so you'll see that you have the gross assessed value up here. You're going to see there's all these adjustments. So like your total, so this house here is worth 350, is assessed value of 352,000. 
they add in all this stuff. Don't worry about following the math right now. And then they'll say like your total tax liability is gonna be 5,100, but then it's reduced for whatever this stuff is. And then, so your total tax liability is 4,300, but you'll see 4,300 is more than 1% of this number. And so 1% of this number ends up being this number. So it then says that your property tax cap is this, you know, is equal to 1%. So that's where this comes from. And then there's these upward adjustments due to voter approved projects and charges of 776. So that means their taxes came due 4292. That's how that works. Okay, this slide here, we're transitioning to home prices. So what is the median sold price? For a single family house so this excludes townhouses and whatnot just to make it apples to apples and so what this is is i took up it looked up what sold for in june 2023 and i didn't include any metrics as to what to look for except what sold and then we looked at what the median was so of all the houses that sold from lower end to higher end what's the median type of house that's selling in that you'll see that st john here that the median home price sale was four hundred and six thousand dollars four bed and it was a four bed two bath and it was on the market for 14 days the days on market just for fun it doesn't really matter it's like including that number yeah so that's saying that the median home in st john is selling for four hundred six thousand. of which you'll see all the towns in northwest indiana that the st john is on the higher end i think dyer is higher for this and i think that was kind of a fluke month because st john's usually the highest you know if you can go way higher into there's subdivisions that are selling in the you know low millions and you know you could get into st john for pretty much low threes right now or somewhere in the threes is where you'd be starting out at taxes this slide has some detail and i'm going to go really fast over this if you want a more in-depth go to that northwest indiana all about northwest indiana video and this goes in deeper dive but state of indiana the for income tax has a flat tax of 3.15 percent and then counties can impose an additional tax. So Lake County imposes a 1.5% tax. So all together you add this plus this and you've got 4.65%. And sales tax is 7%. There's no sales tax on food, which is super awesome. Like when we came to the area, we didn't know that. And so we walked out of the store and we're like, there's no tax on this, that was awesome. And then municipalities cannot add additional taxes. Like in Illinois, right over the border, you'll see lots of uh, taxes. They have different names for them. I mean, was scrambling for how many different names are like places for eating taxes. You can have um, just a, another tax in addition because it, if the if the voters approve it so but in indiana that's not a thing social security taxes are not taxed i think that's the case everywhere in the states but but retirement income is taxed i know there's a handful of states that does not tax retirement income but uh, indiana does and there's also currently no estate or inheritance taxes which is pretty nice all right so housing so i'm going to pull up here my realtor view of sold data that's gonna and we're gonna look up what our house is selling for and we'll see what exactly that what our houses look like in the area that are selling so we're gonna look for three bed two baths and, and up and we'll see what has sold so i've got my mls view pulled up here and unfortunately i forgot about this is that your mls got hacked it was like a ransomware thing where somebody or entity overseas hacked it and then they ransomed back and they were trying to negotiate to get the data back which is pretty crazy so anyway the photos aren't loading of these houses but you can generally see so again these are I, three bed two bath i didn't put any filters on house value or location or anything like that and we'll see that this is from the first of the year so january 1st 2023 that the lowest price one that sold was 300,000 even and then we'll just kind of go through a few different pages we got another three bed two bath 2200 square foot for 375 we're gonna go all the way to the gamut here 399 for a four bed two and a half bath 2300 square foot house uh what's this guy i saw 27 five bed three bath 2700 square foot 413,000. that's a good deal buy that one right now <laughs> all right so we got 475 for a four bed four bath 3100 square foot house Find a five bed, four bath, 4,100 square foot house, $600,000. And let's see what the most expensive one was for so far. 1.25 million for a four bed, five bath, 
5,100 square foot house. So that gives you some information on housing. St. John has been around for a while. So the older houses are gonna have more of the boxy types floor plan. We have like a dining room and a living room and a family room possibly separately walled off or like a hall pass that goes through it. Uh, the newer homes are more like you, you know, see most anywhere nowadays where they're more open concept. So that's generally, you know, and so when you look at about the 2010 and newer is when you're going to see for sure more open concept. When you get into, the, you know, 2000 to 2010, it's going to be hit or miss as to what type of a floor plan you're looking for. This slide shows the cost of living throughout the United States and, you know, specific to St. John. We'll see the color coding up here, the darker blue greenish color is the least and then red is the highest with the whitish off-white color being middle range and we'll see that we are in the middle range of cost of living uh, things to do so there's lots of parks in the area there's trails uh, for hiking or more so for biking and running there's Lake Michigan Beach the dunes is not far away it's a half hour to the north and again, traffic, rough hour, rough hour traffic, or what all, what also traffic we get is the, in the summertime, you get people going to Michigan on Fridays and coming home on Sundays. So you get some pretty gnarly traffic on I-80-94. Uh, there's lots of cool kids, like uh, things like uh, Sky Zone for kids. Uh, the Munster Pool is something that my family uh, has a membership to, and that's pretty cool. It's like, the cost is almost negligible. It's a really nice water place that's got diving boards and water slides and stuff like that it's like 300 and something bucks a year for a family a midwest training center has ice hockey has gymnastics there's you know lots of parks in the area uh, there's arcades and stuff and again we are pretty close to chicago here and other areas like orland park you know it's it's all in the general region here and you know here's a erie lackawanna trail that goes on pretty far yeah so it goes begins in crown point and ends in sibley street and hammond yeah this area is a picture of the dunes so uh, we find ourselves there a few times a year all right thanks for checking out this video about all about st john indiana again before you bounce if you get us hit that subscribe button and then hit like and that would make my day all right thanks for watching and we'll see you around town